So we're so happy to yeah. be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So just um, for those of you who don't have as extensive of a background about Two Dope Queens, Two Dope Queens started as a comedy show between two best friends in Brooklyn, hosted by these two wonderful ladies here to my left. Um, it launched in as a podcast in March 2016, and it is produced by WNYC Studios. Um, so... Uh, the, the Two Dope Queens podcast is praised by The Guardian, by The New York Times. It was actually rated the best podcast of 2016, so let's give it up. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you knew that. I was like, you <laughs> talked about it. I know. The like, <laughs> comedy show what? in New York. Yes. That is amazing. Right. So just going to let that soak in and simmer and sparkle for a second. Uh, so you have season three starting soon, is that yes. right? Yes. Yes, season three starts Tuesday, April 4th. Are you yes. ready? Yeah. Ready to go? Course. All right. We have some pretty cool guests that are coming. We've heard that we have John Hamm, mm -hmm. Gabrielle Union. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that show's going to be two dope queens and another queen. Yeah, yeah like no, two dope queens great. and like a yeah. Khaleesi. Like, yeah. Yeah. And like a so <laughs> It was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into some questions. Cool. I tried to set up some hard-hitting questions. Let's Great. not get too serious. Okay. Okay, but we we're going to... We can, like, do want. whatever, I think honestly. we're going to go in really deep at first. Great. Great. Okay. Whatever you want. All right. I want to talk to you guys <laughs> about your show in the context of modern comedy and intersectional feminism. How cool. do you feel your show sort of fits in into that social commentary? Uh, that's a great yeah. question. It's, it seems, I love that question. It just seems like such a normal... It's, like, not hard-hitting to me. It feels yeah. like just, like, a straight... Because yes. we think about it all the time. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, when we started the, the podcast, we just recognized that the podcasting world was very white. And, um, really? and everyone kind of sounds like Ira Glass, which is great because he has a beautiful voice. voice. Yes. But, voice. you know, I think it can make, you know, women or people of color, people from the LGBTQ plus community feel like, well, this isn't a space for us because the only things that are getting shine or, or, or breaking out mainstream-wise are white people. Yeah. And so when we started the show, we just said that we wanted to do shows, comedy shows, especially in New York, which are also mostly white. Uh, so we just wanted to do shows with women, people of color, people from the queer community, because we're like, there's so many brilliant people that aren't you know, necessarily on, like, Netflix's radar, like Comedy Central's radar yet, but they're really talented and funny, and they have stories to tell that are just as valid and just as important as, like, the white dude stories, you yeah. know what I mean? And sometimes even, like, more important, like, La La Land, like, sorry, that but was that was crazy. trash. That was crazy. <laughs> that was trash. <laughs> and we're like, oh, that you're going to save Jazz, Ryan? Okay. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, All by himself. I can't. It's All like, oh, you himself. can't sing either? Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, Alone. But... Sorry, I, that was, was too much. Drag. Yeah. <laughs> but it just, it it was like, that was me. like a huge, I knew, but it's like, <laughs> La La Land, it cracks me up because it's so triggering for you. It yeah. makes me You're so like, upset. Yeah. I just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, But anyway, the point is that we wanted to just kind of do something that was going to be representative of our conversations with the yeah. people that we hang out with and like the conversations that you guys have at home or at mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. or at the gym. So. Some of us have. Some yeah. At the gym? I ain't talking to nobody <laughs> at the damn gym. <laughs> you don't hang out and chill at Equinox? I do like... like, that's like such a sex in the city lifestyle <laughs> right. sort of reference that you know none of us fucking do. <laughs> none of these people do. I don't know. Maybe people oh, yeah, like you dudes. guys have a gym here. You have a yeah, gym here, right? right? I'm sure you guys like talk to that's like... That's pretty cool. Do you guys like talk or are you guys just mortified? Right. I would... Are you like, you're like, oh my mortified. God, Karen and Counts Payable wants to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Headphones in. Like, that's amazing. We barely well, talk I know to each other outside the gym. Yeah, so well, I know, like, we're always talking about, we both, we're both members of Equinox, a.k.a. Eeks, and so we're always <laughs> joking about going to, like, a class or something together, and I'm always like, I don't know, I'm not really available, just because the idea of, like, being super so close fun. to you and sweating, I'm really scared. Who cares if you know I'm if scared. You it's, like, vulnerable. It's, like, the real me. I might be ashy. My lips might Who get dry. I'm not, I'm not 
checking you out. I just want to do Pilates to get my core strong. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's fine. Let's do it together. Okay, okay. I think I might. Okay. Good. I'll see you upstairs, like, after this. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody so else. So now can. that we've covered La La Land and how much we hated it. Yeah. I thought it was fine, to I, be honest. I detested it. Um, okay. So now, so... Team Phoebe here with the hated La La Land. Cool. Well, all right. um, so now that we've covered that, making sure that the landscape wasn't super white and male, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the impact that you think the show has had. What do you think the impact the show has had in 2016, and what would you like it to be in the next year? You know, it's funny. I, I feel like the best part about, for me, at least for Two Dope Queens, is that now when we go out around Brooklyn, there's always really cool women that come up and they're like, oh, dude, I love your podcast. And it feels like I'm hanging out with my friends. And that to me is like really important. Yeah. And that's kind of why a part of the reason why we do the show is because we like each other and we think friendship is important and female friendship is like really at the core of this podcast. And I really, I do think and hope that we encourage like female friendship in general. And I also just feel like people are always tweeting at us trying to figure out like who the comedian was that we had on our show. And it'll mm. be like a lesbian comedian or like, a, like anybody of the LGBT community. And I feel like they're also getting a platform. So I, I think that's been such a huge part of everything. Um, and I also think like we reach people that we never expected would be into the show like Kevin Bacon was like I love this show he's like I subscribe to it and I listen to it every week and I was We're like, like what? what Kevin you have so many things going on <laughs> and you're listening to, you know what I mean it's just was like crazy he's like yeah, I love this show and he's like my daughter like listens to it and yeah. I was just like that's really cool and like Bono sent us flowers I made it 10 minutes I made 10 minutes and I'll bring up UT you should be it's proud it's like not <laughs> like you kind like, of didn't know because we were looking at a YouTube fan account in the car on the way here. It's called YouTube Blog News. But it's got like 94 followers, and a lot of the photos were blurry. They were out of focus. They no. were formatted no. oddly. They're working on it. They're getting it together. I gotta keep up with my YouTube news. But it was like really cool because Jess and I do like a lot of philanthropic stuff right. with um, Two Dope Queens. And, uh, and we did something for a uh, Poverty is Sexist campaign to have Bono be like, thank you for doing that. It was really cool. Yeah, that was pretty dope. Yeah, so I think the fact that we can highlight people and also people that we're fans of mm -hmm. can be into our stuff and what we're doing feels kind of crazy because sometimes I'm like, I'm just talking about nonsense. And, yeah. You know? Yeah, and we're like, just talking about things that we like and yeah. things that tickle us and make us laugh. And I know for me, my one of my favorite parts about the show is making you laugh. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you've told me you feel the same way too. And so it's really exciting that people respond to that. It's like, oh, cool. So we can do more of what's fun for us and people really like it. That that rules. That's the dream. Yeah, it's I was really cool. listening to Hated It the other day. Oh, oh good. Yeah. There was at least two to three seconds where the two of you are laughing and I found myself laughing and it was just really interesting to be sitting in the middle of Google and I'm just laughing really loud. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. feeling good. like I'm laughing with a group of girlfriends yeah. really loudly. That's good. Yeah, disturbing some of my coworkers who are here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry, really. Not sorry. Okay, so in that vein, what do you think is the most single bit of positive feedback you've received about the show? Um... We don't get any. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, no comments. No one ever Everybody writes hates anything. Us. Remember, yeah. they don't. Um, I don't know. It's just always like when it's just like a, 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 a like when we did um, Sketch Fest at Cobb's, and this was, I guess was two years ago, and this black woman came up to us and she was like starting to cry a little bit, and I was like, "Well, this is like Bieber level." And <laughs> literally not Bieber. It's Bieber. Uh, it's it's not. Bieber adjacent. It's literally not in his neighbor in his borough. It's like okay, maybe not Justin Bieber, maybe like the least famous Jonas brother, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, Kevin. It's Kevin Jonas. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was like Kevin. I feel comfortable with being Kevin. <laughs> K Jones. K Jones. <laughs> and so she like just started to cry. She said, you know, you guys, like your podcast means so much to me. Mm -hmm. Like these are conversations I have with my girlfriends. And I just felt like I wasn't represented in the media. And the show is like a way for me to feel like I'm looking at myself in the mirror. So I was like, that was pretty That's cool. Lit. That's really cool. Yeah. I remember like I don't 
we had Gabrielle Union on the show, oh, and my gosh. she gave us really cool feedback of like she she's a fan of the show, and she was saying how she loves listening to it because she feels like back in the day she couldn't get away with as a black actress saying the things that we're allowed to say. And so it's really, really cool that we are able to express ourselves freely. And we're like, well, thank you for what you did. That's and so true. having like a legend say something like that to us, I, I know we just died. Yeah. And then we like came back to life. And so here we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we definitely died. <laughs> so now you're here. Okay. And so, all right. So that's super positive and we can see how it impacts you. I think that the en energy you get, you guys obviously give back to your show, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what do you think has been the most critical feedback that you've received? And how do you manage that? That's funny. You know, I, ever, I stopped reading like any sort of, reviews of us yeah. a long time ago, like right after we started the show. But one of them that I read was um, that my laugh was annoying, which is fine. Um, but all, cause it's like, there's nothing I can do. Um, but also that it, they're like, it's not for me. Like, I don't like the friend, like the inside friendship stuff. Mm. And it's like, oh, well that's, it's like you that's don't like not friends. For you. Like that's crazy. <laughs> Literally one of the most successful shows of all time. It's called it's Friends. Called friends. <laughs> yeah. It's not so. like it's not like outside small talk with strangers. It's called Friends. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also I mean? like how long have you hated things that are good? You right. know what I mean? Forever. Forever. And how does that affect your day-to-day -day life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we're not for you. Yeah. They woke um, up and decided they hated friendship. friendship yeah. Well. Yeah, like, who yeah. hates that? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's just stupid. Also, yeah. <laughs> um, I used to be on top of the, um, as we have a, a fan page on another website, and I don't want to say it here, because uh, I don't know if you guys are beefing or not. Just kidding. Uh, it's Facebook. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? We're frenemies. It's okay. Okay, cool. Uh, and so I used to check the messages, and there was this one guy uh, it's always like a dude, of course. Always some freaking Tom or Tad. Yeah. Kevin, <laughs> Seth. And yeah. he didn't like how much we said the word like. Oh. And so he, he was telling us that we should work on it. Mm. And <laughs> I, you know, I'm thinking literally this is just how everyone talks. Everyone says like. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama says like. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, called like being a human being. Right. Like Justin Trudeau says like, I've yeah. heard it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's just a filler word. Get over it. And but it's just stuff like that where men want to try and tell us how we should speak differently. Yeah. That would be more pleasing to them, yeah. and it's just they're this ain't so, for you, right? This shit isn't for you, right? And it's all <laughs> society trains people to think that the way that women naturally speak is somehow incorrect, and the way that men speak is somehow the ideal and what people should strive for. And I'm just no, no, no. I don't know. We ain't Talk, got no time for that. Yeah, speak how you want to speak, and so that was kind of really irritating. And then I think sometimes people will say. You know, you and Jace, uh, Jace. It's Jessica. My name's Jessica. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can we call you Jace? Can we call you Jace? I can guess I call you so. Jace? No, I was, I was going to say Race, and then I said You and Jace. Jace. It's pretty yeah. funny. Yeah. It's funny that, like, you're one of my best friends, and you just call me Jace. So I'm going to remember that forever. Keep going. <laughs> this, this person said that Jess and I talk too much about race. Mm -hmm. Oh. And it was just kind of like, one, we don't, and also these we are... <laughs> No, it's I not didn't. too much. It's no. a proper oh, yeah, amount because we much. don't talk about race in a real yeah, way in this country in the first place, which is why, you know, we have the present we have. Yeah. But, you know, sorry. Mm. Now I'm going to, like, yeah. let, that, let that simmer, which is why we have the president we have. Yeah, but yes. I think in us talking about, you know, racist cab drivers or bad customer service, these are all things that people of color go through in the country. Yeah, These are all things that every day we face these microaggressions that you are made. You kept a stomach, like, right. oftentimes you, I know for, like, us, we grew up in the suburbs. It's like you're around white people who oftentimes don't understand what microaggressions are. Correct. You have to hold mm -hmm. your tongue. It's like you have to really keep it composed. And then when you find somebody who is a person of color or a member of the LGBTQ community who understands that, it's the best connection. It's like the most life-affirming thing ever. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, you know, when women get catcalled and all, like most of the time, that's a very personal experience that you, you just log and then you go about you your day. On, but if right. you explain that to another woman, it feels so good and it feels really life affirming. And that to me, 
also this is a show about like friendships with people of color and that's that's how we talk to each other mm -hmm. yeah so it really is that means that you don't have enough friends that are minorities i think if you feel like we talk about race too much because every day we are reminded of our race and we are constantly confronted with that in our day to day yeah. and i just feel like it's the most natural thing to talk about things that make you laugh or sad or angry or happy with like how you look and how right. your race and i think phoebe you you alluded to it but i just want to make sure that um that we talk about it a little bit more you had, did have an episode where you guys talked about an experience in a cab with a racist cab driver and in terms of the validation of not just talking as friends but it's also really valuable that you talked about your thought process as you went through that experience like was that racist? Was that not racist? Do I react now? Do I not react now? Do I allow, you know, my partner who's a white male to react? You know, how do I process this this feeling? Do you find that a lot of your viewers respond to that as well? Not just how you react together, but sort of the verbal the storytelling that goes with how you experience racism mm -hmm. as black women. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think when I think we both have racist cab drivers in the same week, we all have. It was nuts. We, we like yeah. synced up like it was our period. Was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and so it was just very funny how we both were like, "Hey, so this happened." She's like, "Wait, I, this happened to me." And so we're, I, those are conversations that happen all the time, every day. Yeah. And I think part of it is that people think that racism happens one time to you, one time in your life, mm -hmm. and that's it. And it's like, no, it happens every week or every month, every year. And so I think when we both have these different experiences, like how Jess's cab driver only stopped once he saw her boyfriend. That's right. Or how the guy said the N-word because he was like, well, my daughter's half black, so I can say it. Yeah. And it was just these weird, weird, weird kind of like we were supposed to live in a post-racial society, but things like this are still happening. Yeah. So I think it just kind of <laughs> made the black the black women, hopefully, who listen to the episode be like, yeah, I have my own really shitty cab experience, and mm -hmm. I, maybe I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And like the fact that we said something, maybe they're like, well, next time I am going to say something, yeah. and I'm going to let people know that this is terrible. Like when I was in that situation, I didn't say anything to the guy because I was like, this is weird, this is crazy, he knows where I live, like mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. anger any some, anyone who's driving me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is in those situations where you got to, you, you hopefully learn that you can stand up for yourself more. Right. Yeah, and that's, I think, this show has given me a lot of things. But one of the things that it's given me is strength to sort of speak up a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's this idea of the black woman as angry or confrontational. But oftentimes I find that I shrink into myself and I get really quiet when mm -hmm. something is like, if there's a microaggression or if there is something racist that's happened. But I feel like the more that I do our show and the more that we get feedback from other black women because really we're just two black women in a in a world full of black women mm -hmm. you know um I'm like oh I should speak up more it kind of gives me the courage to speak out I think right and you did it so differently right like so in, in that episode you at one point when you got into the cab and he had hailed the cab you said ha ha you had like this moment right <laughs> surprise <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I got you surprise got you yeah yeah. That's my white my white boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then you responded Customer to service. Customer I emailed. Service. Yeah. I said, hi, I'm black. Hi. That's a <laughs> great subject line. Yeah. Um, really gets people on high alert. Yeah. They're like, oh, shit. And I got, I, got a, I got a refund. And they're like, we're going to reprimand this guy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great. So it was awesome. That's great. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. Thank you for going down that path. That was definitely, for me, that was one of my favorite episodes. If you haven't seen it, you need to go start listening to the entire podcast, but start with that one. Um, yeah. It was awesome. Um, what advice would you give other black women, but just intersectional women, because I think we've mm -hmm. talked a lot about intersectionality and about allyship, but trying to get into this industry, trying to start a podcast, trying to really make their voices known. Um, do you want to go first? Yeah, well... Uh, First of all, please start a podcast because the <laughs> amount of feedback that we've gotten from Trudeau Queens is great, but you know there are so many black 
female voices that need to be heard. Mm -hmm. And I think the response that we've gotten is just evidence that like, oh, there needs to be more black female stories out there. Um, But also, um, if you're doing it with another person, find someone that like excites you and that you can geek out with and that you enjoy. And also, if you're doing it with another person, realize that it's kind of a marriage and it's a relationship and it's a team and you have to sort of figure out how to work together and do give and take and communicate and figure that out. Um, And also, be the most yourself that you possibly can is the biggest one because it's super valuable and it keeps it from being just another like podcast about white dudes whiten it up um (laughs) you just be yourself because that is the most interesting fascinating thing and if you're speaking from a point of truth then it will resonate with people really it's like impossible for it to not resonate Mm -hmm. that that would be my advice yeah um i think just if you think you have a story to tell that's worth hearing, you're probably right. So you should just go for it. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if there's not an example there, a blueprint for you to follow. You can be the first one. And you can kind of figure things out yourself and what works and what doesn't. So it's like, don't be afraid to take a leap. And like WNYC is like getting really yes. more involved with other things. And so we're both wearing pins for their latest podcast that's coming out called Nancy on April 9th and it's an LGBTQ plus podcast to be a lot of like storytelling and also like investigative stuff and they just decided hey we want our voices out there mm-hmm. yeah. and these are stories that should be told and now it's a podcast at WNYC so I think if you just really believe in your idea a thousand percent and Maybe you can't start out at WNYC. Maybe you have to start in your your apartment and do a podcast. I did that. I was doing a podcast in my apartment <laughs> in Brooklyn in a shitty one-bedroom apartment. And she was there. She saw it. Well, I allegedly did a podcast. I, an episode of this I accidentally met. deleted it. So <laughs> like Try and get a producer. You guys work at Google. Yeah. That would like yeah. never happen. <laughs> Maybe get a producer because I did not know how to work SoundCloud properly. But it was like it, it was like three hours of my time that I'll never get back. And she but it's like completely deleted in. it. And spades. Kind of. So, like, we like sat at her kitchen table. And it's Google Talks. We just, like, we, it was worth know, it. it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, not going to delete this footage. So. <laughs> so, but, yeah, just start out wherever you can and hone your voice mm-hmm. and hone your vision. Mm-hmm. Because the thing that's going to set you apart the most, like, you think it's, oh, I have to sound like this. Oh, I have to do what's already been done. The thing that's going to set you apart the most is if you stay true to your voice. Mm-hmm. Because, ultimately, people want that new thing. And a lot of times people are scared to take the risk on the new thing. But if you can just establish your own stuff and your own following and just believe in your own vision and be a business person about it. That's the other thing. It's not just creativity. You have to be a business person about whatever endeavor you go into. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fine. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while. But, you know, keep the faith. Be yourself. Yeah. Don't be afraid to start. Yeah. Be all the way, all the way, all the way yourself. Yeah. Don't try to moderate or change your voice. Yeah. yeah. And it's, the, it's the hardest thing to do. I think yeah. it's like life's journey. Hashtag yeah. self-help. You know? yeah. um, it's a marriage. Oprah's life class. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So really. you two are best friends in real life. Mm-hmm. Really, really best friends. What's it like? I'm going to ask you a few questions. A, we talked a lot about what are the sort of feelings, motivations that you have to have really being true to yourself. Mm-hmm. How did you guys get started? Like, How did you decide you were hanging out having pizza like how did you look over to your girl and say we should start a comedy show well we met um when i did background on a daily show piece she did about black Mm -hmm. hair in the military and i had already known who she was because she was in upright citizens brigade um as was i and she like had a white bay she was like really funny (laughs) and so we met uh that was july 2014 and uh i was just like hey do you want to come do my podcast um, and I was like, this is not jank. Like, I interviewed Yeah, white. she was like, it's super, it's like, professional. Like, <laughs> Deleted my shit. Yeah. I was like, I, was like I interviewed Wyatt Sinek. Like, this is, like, legit. Didn't like, delete it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was, like, so hateful that you accidentally deleted it. Well, I was like, let me do a new, like, different recording process this time. I yeah. should not have done you that. You shouldn't have switched the style up on me. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> That's, like, black on black crime. <laughs> 
But you have to learn. I'm an experimenter. I'm like Benjamin Franklin. You're literally not like Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> that is so disrespectful. <laughs> you like deleted a podcast yeah. in your... <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. Yes. I'm, um, you know, in training. Um, anyway, so... Jeez, <laughs> and so we just kind of hit it off when we were taping the podcast. And she said her birthday was coming up. And asked her what she wanted to do. She said, I always wanted to do stand-up. And I said, well, I do a monthly stand-up show at ECB East. Do you want to co-host it with me as a goof? It'll be fun. We'll just, like, hang out. And then, like, it'll be, like, a nice treat for the audience. And then we ended up having so much fun doing it that we're like, all right, let's do another show together. And then we're like, let's just keep doing this. And then we moved to Union Hall because we're like, we want to get paid. And <laughs> UCB doesn't pay, which is fine. I mean, that's... It's like, just do you. Do right, whatever. You, but we wanted, we needed person. Right, I'm a thing. business person. <laughs> it's the most Jay-Z thing about me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm reaching real high with these legends. I know. I'm like, 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 myself. You're like, literally Franklin, like reaching Jay-Z. and then pulling like, yeah. a lot. <laughs> like, I'm ruining his life. Yeah. <laughs> and like, legacy. Yeah. <laughs> And we were both, we had a really amazing <laughs> show at Union Hall. We were both like, this could be a podcast. Yeah. And I was like, well, what if we just record ourselves? And she's like, we should make it professional. You deleted our <laughs> <laughs> The track record is you deleted our podcast. <laughs> and she was like, I know some people at uh, WNYC. Let's, you know, figure out like a game plan, mm-hmm. like pitch it and everything. And the rest is just yeah. her story. Hi. Hey. <laughs> That's great. So, okay. What is what has been your favorite episode and your favorite guest and why? Ooh. Lisa. Unana. Um Are you going to say are you gonna, are you going to say Johnny Ham? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I was just thinking. I'm trying to think. Oh, we had Carrie Brownstein on, and I that was cool. Am obsessed with her, yeah. and so that was kind of a dream come true. Um, I had seen her in high school a couple times, like doing shows and stuff. And I love we're such fans of Portlandia. Mm-hmm. And, um, she was amazing and super fun. And I think we crowd surfed with her too. No, we didn't. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Wait, we, yeah, did. we did. We, we did. did. We did. It was like iconic. It was um, really cool. Did we get video of that? Yeah, there was. I hope so. I hope we did. Okay. And then <laughs> thanks, thanks, Joanna. And then that same night, Phoebe personally crowd surfed with John Ham, and uh, I got video of that. that was, like, and that really was really cool. fun because we like hell hands. Yeah. <laughs> it and was like literally after our wedding, we just crowd surfed out of our wedding. Yeah. Room, like you know? everybody was like, <laughs> Yeah. Like Mazel. Yeah. Like and literally. Like, <laughs> and we're like, Now that we're so Jewish, but thank you. Yeah. 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 No, like, that was cool. amazing. Yeah. And then I realized too that episode was very overwhelming because our, I haven't been single for a while, but I realized when we were doing the John Hamm episode that I was like, very overwhelmed yeah. and so I couldn't say things that were real or I couldn't say <laughs> words I couldn't put things together coherently yeah and uh I realized that about myself I was like reverting back <laughs> into the third grade me um yeah but that was, no, those were really great. fun I, I think yeah. I was great yeah was okay yeah you were great cool because yeah. I, I like feel like I spit a lot during that episode. No, you were fine. It was fine. I was like spitzing everywhere. Well, it, the part of it is because he is hands down the most attractive person we ever had on the show. Right. No, and, no, no tea, no shade to everybody who's done the right. show, but y'all but, know what, y'all yeah. know what happened. Um, it's, it's the ham And so yeah. we yeah. were. <laughs> <laughs> this is like not, not a casual phrase that no. you can slip in like no. that. You no. can't no. slip like in ham like you can't. can't just be like, hamaconda. Like, that's you, crazy. You, you did it. Like, I did that in your brain. Yeah, yeah it's like, let's put that in a hamaconda. That's insane. Okay, great. We can look that up later. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he was just so, the thing that I loved is that we we were trying, for when we did the L.A. show, we told Shanoa, um, who's uh, one of the producers on our podcast, we're like, our dream guests are RuPaul and John Hamm. Yeah, that's and it. And we're still holding out for Ru, so Ru, please. Ru, please. Ru, 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 please, please, Mama please. Ru. And so, um, John, so Shanoa reached out to John because he was supposed to do something else, and then yeah. he couldn't, 
and he told Shanoa, but I really want to do Two Dope Queens. And we were both like, wait, he listens to Two Dope Queens? <laughs> like, we what? died. It was we crazy. Died. It was like, this is Mad Men. Um, but, like, it's not disrespectful. Not to women. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, we have our like rights. more than one Jay -Z, woman Benjamin of color. Franklin. We have Mad our rights and, yeah. like, okay. jobs. Um, we can vote. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, we did vote. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we voted. Yeah. We voted. Oh, we voted. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's not, because it's that, now I'm getting... Yeah. Okay. We voted. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we go. voted. <laughs> we did. We, we did we our did shit. our part. Some so people nobody didn't. can tell me nothing. Yeah. Like, really. Nothing. We ninety four really percent of yeah. black women. Ninety four percent. We voted. Okay. And so when he just showed up and he was so nice. He was like, I love the show and he was And just, we were like Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he was literally like the most yeah. chill. He was like the most chill. We were like, yeah, he was like very fine. Yeah. But we didn't do any of that. Right. But we were just like, you know, like, what do you want to do? Right, literally, literally. Woo. Yeah, and we were like, what do you want to do? He's like, I'll follow your lead. It's totally fine. And I was, I was like, like, wow, that's hot. Even that's that cool. was hot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is like really sexually <laughs> intense. Uh, yeah, he's like, <laughs> just explain the bit to me. Right. And so basically, we were just like, we're just going to hit on you for 20 minutes. And he was like, cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, Thank you for being a good sport, but he was like, well, yeah, he's like, well, yeah. he says like, some great things. It was nuts. Yeah. Mm. And, he, like, and we questions. did a little a little bit we do sometimes if we have like a celebrity guest that nobody knows is coming out, we'll be like, Can we get some water? We're thirsty, it'll just be us. And we'll be like, mm. We're thirsty, can we get some water? And then <laughs> we the don't celebrity do it like that, I, but I do. And <laughs> <laughs> the best celebrity comes out and brings us water. But it was crazy because with him. He's such an amazing actor that he like took was, an extra second and we genuinely didn't know right. if he was coming out or not. <laughs> so we like literally acted with Johnny. Yeah. Like we like basically I had won an Emmy. I did like a I did like a stage cough, like what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? What an actor's choice. Like literally Viola Davis over here. It's like and fences, basically. It was literally yeah. fences. Yeah, was just kidding. It was her fences performance. Yeah. And <laughs> We've covered all the Academy Awards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, but he like came out. It was amazing. We like yeah. acted with him. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> best yeah. show, best <laughs> guest. Yeah. We're holding out for RuPaul. Ru. <gasps> Look in the camera. RuPaul. RuPaul Ru Charles. Ru. 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 I'm watching Ru. Ru. season Ru. Ru. nine Ru. Yes. this Friday. Yes. Please just do our Let's show. Watch. It'll be fun. We would love you. Come. Okay. <gasps> so last question, mm -hmm. and we're gonna try to we're gonna try to be serious, but I know that we can. Um, okay. So. How do you balance your need to bring joy, levity, bring your voice, highlight the voices of other great comedians and other great actors with some of the very real traumatizing, I can't even find another word for it, political change and environment that we find ourselves in? Um, I was literally studying your post-election episode, uh, trying to get through the feels, trying to work through the feels. Yeah. How did you plan that show? How do you process this now? How do you sort of bifurcate what's happening with the social political landscape and the goals of Two Dope Queens? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that episode was, Joanna, I think that was your idea, right? Mm -hmm. To do like, yeah, it the, was. The post-election? Yeah. Or were you not paying attention? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna, Joanna, Literally Joanna. Literally at our Google talk. <laughs> oh, that was Rachel. Rachel. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Rachel. Rachel, you were nice about hi. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Sorry, we dragged you. Yeah. We <laughs> you like don't deserve any of yeah. that. <laughs> but like, pay attention. Yeah. To Google. Talk but also, she like does. She like edits every one of our. That's episodes. true. Sorry, we dragged. We you. love you, Joanna. Yeah. Like you, I. Um. So yeah, I think we were all just feeling like a little. Because I think we all kind of assumed that, like, America would be like, okay, the joke is it would be, over. Yeah, like, America would. We're going to, like, not elect Donald Trump. Just kidding. Even when we had right. to record, like, we had to record two versions of that episode, and the first one was if Hillary won, and then we were like, yeah, great. And they're like, well, why don't we just, just in case, do the other one where if she didn't win? And we were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, it happened. And uh, <laughs> I don't even want to it say happened. it. It's it like happened. literally Voldemort. If you read a Harry Potter book, you would know yeah. what I'm talking about. It happened. <laughs> it happened. And we were just kind of feeling like, I think everyone, a lot of people were in a state of shock. Yeah. And so I think we all just agree with Rachel that it would be good to have an episode where we just address it openly and honestly. 
and be like, hey, let's just talk through what we're feeling right now and just get these emotions out. Because mm -hmm. I, I know, like, I was crying for yeah. days. It was yeah. I think really, everyone was. It was really yeah. just the idea that somebody who is supposed to represent you completely doesn't have your interests at heart. Is no, has your, has your, really your destruction. Out. Really, yeah. and it's really really deeply upsetting yeah like honestly like I go to therapy every week and my therapist has been like yeah all everybody wants to talk about is the fact that we have this president and mm -hmm. how it, it bothers them just yes but continue yeah no that was good and so I think when we just sat down it wasn't like Jess and I had anything prepared we really just spoke from the heart mm -hmm. about how we felt we said some ignorant things I think they cut out of the podcast I want to hear the ignorant I know, but things it's just like, we did that There's Joanna that's you. <laughs> no, but you know, like we can like just go yeah. off and just be yeah. like, all right, this is let's like we can really pop off. Yeah. Right? yeah. So this is for our these are for our texts. Right. <laughs> yeah. These should be texts. Um, but yeah, no, it felt really kind of um, I don't know. I think it felt like cathartic yeah. for us, mm -hmm. and I think for a lot of the listeners, we kind of said a lot of the things they were thinking. So it just felt really good, and I think going forward with the show, we just want to keep doing the same thing with our show, which is just mm -hmm. like highlight different voices. Mm -hmm. Um, promote comedy that's about punching up, not punching down. Yeah. And, you know, just keep telling our stories. And I think if everyone just keeps, like, putting their stories out there and putting their lives out there, it's, we're going to drown out the nonsense. We're going to drown out the haters. We're going to drown out the ugliness. Yeah. yeah. So. And it's nice, too, because I feel like one of the reasons comedy is great is because it sort of transcends differences in a way. Yeah. And I feel like if people can listen to our podcast and feel a little bit of comfort for 45 minutes to an hour, then we've done our job. You know, just taking a second and just yeah. really being like, oh, it's going to be okay. Oh, there's still great comedy out there. Oh, okay. This is like a transgender person doing stand-up. Oh, cool. You know, it's yeah. if if we can continue to uplift those voices, then we're, we're going to be okay the next four years. Yeah. Well... On that note, thank you for the encouragement because I think we all need it. I think everyone watching needs it. I know that you can feel the energy in the room. For those of you watching, the energy in the room is amazing. I just want to make sure that we actually open up the floor to the room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to yeah. thank you, ladies, for coming. It's thank been you for amazing. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, let that soak in. We just keep talking. And are you ready for round fire questions? Yes. There are yes, two mics. There's one it. here and one there. We're oh going to start gosh. on the Everyone's right. Everyone's wearing white so far. Yeah, yes. nice. It's a little bit. If you're not wearing white, don't come to the yeah, mic. Yeah, you're not allowed to talk. <laughs> don't come to the mic. And make sure that you balance load the mics, guys. So don't cry one. Anyway, go ahead. Kanechi. Hello. Um, What's your name? Kanechi. Hi, Kanechi. Hi. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They came out less strong than I wanted it to. Right. Yeah. But um, into it. Yeah. my question... Believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I'm a black engineer, I believe. Uh, anyway, my question is, uh, whenever I'm listening to your co podcast, like, my favorite parts are, like... Actually, my favorite part is before the show actually mm -hmm. starts, and you're talking to, like, the sound guy. I thought... I, like, I start crying during that part because it's so hilarious. And I, my question is actually, have you thought of, like, making episodes of just the banter and just the friendship like like a few episodes without guests we get that a lot actually that feedback um yeah. and we just we really want to make sure that we are giving platforms to people that otherwise wouldn't have it so i think we want to use it for that yeah and we do like the bonus shows like we did the advice episode yeah the bone bone show which is really fun mm -hmm. and yeah. my brother like wants to do an advice episode does with he us. Yeah. oh that's gonna be that's gonna That'd be, be really funny yeah that's gonna be great yeah so i think stuff cool. like that the, those episodes where you can get like a lot of us but like she said like we really want to showcase people and i think that's the heart of the show yeah. is showcasing well no we're the heart of the show um, <laughs> that's right girl <laughs> us. but they're like they're the the guests are like the wrists of mm. the show i don't know yeah that's no absolutely the stakes yeah the stakes the, the, stakes, the risks the thing yeah the forearm of the show whatever yeah. there's the other body parts that aren't the heart and <laughs> we, want, we just want to make sure those people Ears. are hurt Ears. thank you <laughs> thank yeah. you thank, thank you so thank much for the you. feedback though hi thank you for coming to talk to us and thank you for your work thanks what's your name can Regina. everyone just say their hi, name yes. hi hi good to see you <laughs> I have so many questions, and I love so many white guys. Let's gap. Thank you. <laughs> but I'll keep it to one. Yes. 
<laughs> You've touched about this a little bit. How much do you leverage your network for your guests? Because your guests are awesome. Mm. And then how much do you put your wish list together? Oh. So, like, as professionals, if we're all being business people about what we do, how much would, would you recommend that we leverage what we have or, like, go out and kind of just put it in the universe for your dream? Um, I mean, I'm all about putting things in the universe and talking about things all the time to manifest it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you work at Google. Like I would literally just be like, I, hi, I work at Google. Can I get this soup for free? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and like literally everyone at prep would be like, sure, here you go. (laughs) So you have like such a great, like, you know, I think with our show, because, we found out, like, you know, Carrie Brown, like, all these celebs were, like, listening to the show. We were like, oh, we should just ask them to do it. They mm-hmm. won't say no. And so I think once we kind of know that it's on someone's radar, we then go we for it. Then, like, we yeah. ask them, like, on a first date. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, you work at Google, like, lead with that and be like, we've done this, this, this. You're like, you our give office, me- yeah. there's a whole floor of our office that's just dedicated to seasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Yeah. These are seasons. <laughs> like, we have snacks. Like, like that's insane. You yeah. guys have, like, walls of moss. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, like, a massage chair in five restaurants on yeah. one floor. It's like it's like Oprah designed this place and then left. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, my work is done. <laughs> she, like, sprinkled her fairy dust on yeah. them. And They've bounced. seen one floor, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to, like, low-key kind of drag you guys because that is fucking amazing. Yeah. I work out of my, like, off of a couch in my apartment. (laughs) Yeah, so just... Anytime. Really? Like, for Uh, lunch? Exclusively? Oh, thanks. But, yeah, you use your your network. You use that power, because a lot of times people will be like, oh, Google? Okay, I'll, like, listen to this as opposed to, like, hi, I'm, like... Working at... I work. I work for myself. Yeah, I don't like, know. And they're like, oh, boo. Yeah, fart. Yeah. So yeah, use the Google yeah, connection no. for uh, sure. Fart. Yeah, uh, fart. Okay. Over to the right. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, uh, thank you. Mike. Hi, Mike. How Hi. tall are you? I am 6'6". Six, six. Six, oh, my six. God. That's yeah. hot. Very cool. That's yeah. Hot. It's like, <laughs> if it, as yeah. somebody who's six feet tall, if it's like six feet or over, I'm mm-hmm. like, so, <laughs> it's not you. Yeah. It's more of my <laughs> body. It's like, I'm like, oh. It's like, it's can't control it. Okay. Mike, they can't control it. Mike, what do you do at Google? Uh, I do university programs, so I'm the recruitment side of things. That's cool. hot, too. Are you, like, <laughs> like, are you single? Like, what's up? I, I don't know. He seems young. Yes. Yeah. How, Wait, how, how, young how young are you? How old are you? No, how you? I'm 29. Oh. oh okay. I think yeah, that's cool. cool. <laughs> do you have a headboard? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's like a sign that you're like a man. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. His car is like got good style. Where do you live? He's like. I live in Crown Heights. Crown Heights. Oh, you said you live in Crown Heights. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, 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 that's Ask him where he gets his clothes. Yeah, I like <laughs> your clothes are cool. Is it Urban Outfitters? What? what um, I got this secondhand. Cool. Uh, Even better. Cool. Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> and then there's we're the jeans. The oh, yeah, Mike, great. we're gonna make this happen. But um, we should we should ask so, the question. Yeah, sorry. So my question. <laughs> You know what? This is how I'm gonna date from now on. I'm just gonna like hold like Q and A's. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! Can you step to the mic, please? Yeah. <laughs> step to the mic. I'll ask all the questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Sorry, not sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so thinking about allyship as being a really awesome thing in general, one of the things that I've been talking about and reading about recently is the idea of people who are like woke misogynists. Mm-hmm. I had a friend who said, I just saw Get Out. I feel like a woke racist. Like, I just didn't realize I'm not thinking about these things. That's okay. First, have you had any situations, <laughs> and anecdotally, that you're like, no, I thought you were on my team, and then this happened. <laughs> and then also, generally, other than like, <laughs> shutting yes, down the, the black bullshit. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> How do we, all the time. Being alive. Literally, like, like, like the yeah. entire yeah. country yeah. just did yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. The like, entire like, country just like, did that. Like, literally, literally. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Other than yeah. like, consistently shutting down the bullshit, how do we prevent people from being so comfortable having that sort of identity? Mm. 
You know what? That's a good question. Um, you, I think it's a give and take. It's. I feel like, first of all, surround yourself with friends and people that are woke and, you know, are kind and nice and generally, like, aware of what's happening, but also realize that certain things are out of your control, too. Like, don't... I think you should only do that to the extent that you're not exhausting yourself and you're not tired. Uh, because one of my favorite things that my therapist says to me is, you don't have to fight today. It'll... You you could live... To, sometimes it's, like, good to crawl into bed and just watch reruns of Buffy the Vampire Slayer mm -hmm. or play The Sims, if you're me. And uh, I feel like it is... Only doing it to an extent, but also realizing that you can't control everybody. And just making sure that with your immediate group and when you're out and about, you express your allyship and you make sure that you advocate, as a, as a white male, make sure that you advocate for people that otherwise wouldn't get in rooms that you're able to. Mm -hmm. But only so much. And uh, I also think that if it's like your family, like if it's like, somebody old like if it's like grandma it's like she's gonna die soon anyway <laughs> like let her go like yeah. just yeah. Let, her float yeah. away. let her float like just let her take like it with her yeah. yeah like it's like crazy she's seen a lot of crazy shit but it's like just let her go um but yeah what is what is your advice? um i i also i also think it's like we all have to remind ourselves that we always have to be learning mm. ABL just made it up. Always be, always like, be always learning. Closing, learning. But like, always be yeah, I stole yeah. it, but I made it up. No, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like for me, like I'm constantly like having to learn about trans issues because that's something mm -hmm. that I don't know everything about. Mm -hmm. And it's fine to be like, I don't know everything. Yep. Let me go read a book. Let me go educate myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's great that your friend saw Get Out and then was like, oh, I'm more racist than I thought. Yeah, and that person's right. going to go check themselves and like really like evaluate their behavior so they can do better in the future. And I feel like once you know better, you can then do, do better. better. So I think just really just checking yourself and just being like, hey, am I doing everything that I can to be like a good person? Do I still mm. think these shitty things? Or do I occasionally make a bad joke that I shouldn't say, but it makes people laugh, and so that's why I do it. So I think as long as people are really open about, I don't have all the answers, but I really want to learn, and they're not like, oh, well, Jess, you're black, so I'm going to ask you everything so I can learn about black people. What did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not on. like turning someone into, like, yeah. you know, learning annex, but just, like, educating yourself, I think, is great. Of course, horse. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so you're the last question. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Wait, nice. no one else wants to ask a good question? We, like, totally just, like, hit on this dude I mean, relentlessly uh, for 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I understand. It's a good it's a good strategy. Hi. 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 My name is Kayla. Just thank you for coming and thank you for everything that you do. Hi, Kayla. Um, I love hi. the way you're pulled together right yeah, now. Yeah, like, cute. Kayla, <laughs> like, um, like Kayla is a huge fan real. of yours. She's I been am. pinging me about this fan. for a week. You should yes. know this. Mm -hmm. um, so of what you can share, what other side projects do you guys have coming up this mm -hmm. year? Uh, for me, uh, I'm, I'm going to be in L.A. April and May because I'm writing on the last season of Portlandia, which is very exciting um and yeah i think that's it yeah and i just uh, went to sundance with a movie called the incredible jessica james and uh we sold it to netflix so it'll be it'll be on netflix uh, in the next couple months which is very exciting so look look for me there thank you thank, thank you. you thank you Wait, everybody uh, should we just do this one last I, part or no Meg, megan didn't say no go ahead go cool. go, go 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 go, go. go. It's worse. I don't even have a question. I just came here for your commentary. <laughs> I sort of enjoy how you interact with people. Thank you. And ah. also to tell Jessica that I miss you so much more than Jon Stewart. Oh, thank ah. you so much. Like, oh. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's true. Thank you. Right. Um, well, I'm not we... capable of growing a, I don't work in late night anymore, beard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have a gift for you, so we're going to get you a gift. What? And we want to thank you again for coming. What? So Did you get us more? a massage chair? We tried. <laughs> oh, my God. A double bag. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Oh, my much. God. Thank you so oh, my much. God. Oh, my God. What do we have? OK, this is like Oprah's favorite things, but Literally. we didn't like buy yes. any of these things. Yeah, and we don't have them under you your guys. chairs. You don't. Oh, this is cute. You. This I is love awesome. This I need a mug. I need a mug, too. Ooh, a shirt. I love shirts. I'm going to sleep in them. This is great. And I'd be like, Mike, I'm cold. I need to put on this extra large shirt. That's funny. <laughs> Thank Jana. Thank Jana. This Jana, is Jana, amazing. Thank with. you so much. Oh, my God. This is great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Google. Oh, thanks, right, guys. Thanks again. Thank you, Google. Okay. You guys can go 
back to work now and be Why very happy. Lie? Yes, have fun.